Well, howdy, folks. This is America's number one business news podcast, Market Explainer. But first, I want to tell you about Big Man Deer. Big Man Deer served by this guy right here, right there. <laughs> um, BigManDeer.com. You can go there and forward you to the Amazon Prime store where you can get all of the Big Man's merchandise. Um, I think it is everybody's goal in life to become an influencer so they can have merch. Everybody wants to be Logan and Jake Paul. So um, you can go to BigManGear.com because who doesn't need another T-shirt with a fun, quirky, horny thing on it? That's right. So that's BigManGear.com. But this next story, as I just said, sponsored by BigManGear.com, is Churro submits a draft registration to propose that they're going to go public via an IPO. It's called an S1. I think they filed their S1. And that they're not going to go at that, which surprises me. Firstly, secondly, never made a profit in their entire existence. What are you doing? Like, secondly, but that's thirdly, this is why they're not going as pack. This is why this company should not be on any list for IPO S pack for nothing. It's a right. losing business model and has never made money and is not this whole BS part of this. The, we're looking to be profitable in 2022. You're lying. You're lying yeah. out of your teeth. No, no, hold on. They're looking to be profitable, but they know they ain't going to be profitable. Come on. First of all, Turo, awful name. Awful oh, name no. says hey, nothing about what on. their business model, Listen, but what they do. Am I, am I a host on Turo? Well, probably. Do I have a small <laughs> fleet on Turo? That could be possible. <laughs> so let's not, let's not just start pissing all over Turo. So let's Turo... Just Tell everybody what Turo is, Danny. What is it? Turo is Airbnb for cars. So right. the basic concept is if you're a host on Turo, you rent out cars on Turo. There's a, there's, you, listen, like every other industry, there's somebody who wants to sell for $30 to $3.99. Click here now. I'm going to teach you how to become a billionaire on Turo. Well, and look, the most profitable, if you can say that, part of their business is convincing people out there to rent out their luxury cars, their Lambos, yeah. their, you know, yeah. so this is their profit. And again, but how many people out there are willing to rent out their Lambos, their expensive yeah. cars right. to these idiots? All you need is somebody to, to crash that $400,000 car and do yeah. you, it, insurance, does so Turo, Turo pick up the, you know? So Turo has a split and it depends. You can decide on want to split the, the, the net earnings 60, 40, 70, 30, mm -hmm. and you decide what happens. But here's what ends up being the case. Now, this isn't everybody. This is just a little bit of research that I've done on my own. But it, it turns out that in situations where vehicles are totaled, not only is the insurance company going to drag their feet, guess who else is dragging their feet on getting you your payments back? Ah, yeah. So, I mean, look, you're talking about a company that wants to go IPO that in 2020, or I'm sorry, 2019, Danny, lost yeah. $47 million. They only lost $50 million? That's it? And you want to go IPO. Oh, yeah. I, we're ready. We're ready to, ready to go IPO. We only lost $50 million. Listen, this is what I... This is, this is how wealth is transferred from... Middle income to, to high, you know high middle income earners to wealthy people. Wealthy people put up the investment. They put up all the, the put up all the money. The the business never turns a profit, but they are they have a cultural significance or something. Mm -hmm. And then what what do they do? They go public, and the public they just start. I'm going to buy the stock, and the public buys up the stock, and then the wealthy billionaire who put the money up in a failing business. It's paid. Get, and gets out. Gets paid yeah, and gets out. It. Their risk yeah. is over. Their right. risk is over. They've made not only their money back, but all kinds of profit, and now my risk is over. Right? And they're on to the next one. And they're on to the next uh, You know, so here's, here's my deal. Okay, so in this article, they say, and again, say, because part of, if you're not part of the SEC yet, right, right. or any of that, right. your accounting is not verified by oh, other accountants, right? right? That's part of SEC filings and blah, 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 That's right? That's part of what the S1 does. It, it, so, it the they, when they filed this, they're saying, unverified, right. saying that they, they've had their first quarter of profitability. Now, later in the article, they say, buried at the bottom... 
they say how they gain profitability is they let go a third of their workforce. <laughs> so, oh, we've yeah. had our first quarter of profitability. That's awesome. Great. How did you do that? We laid off a third of our workforce. What do you yeah. do? Like, right. So here's the thing. This is accounting tricks. So, so basically what's happening here is um, they, they were, they, it's, it's, they knew that they could have been profitable, but they carried all these extra employees. They fire everybody. Listen, Bob, bro, you can't make money as a business that rents cars in the car rental apocalypse year of 2020 <laughs> right. 2021, right. where all of the car rental companies sold off their rental cars. And then on the back end, I know somebody who's renting a car right now from one of the largest car rental, private car rental companies in the country, in the world. Mm -hmm. Okay. They got pulled over and the police said, your vehicle doesn't have legitimate registration. They the plates off of a different car. The guy renting the car goes, I rented the car for the paperwork. This right. is, it says the license plate number. He goes, okay, I'm not going to give you a ticket because it's not your fault, but they have to come pick up the car. Car rental companies had four days to come pick up. They haven't done it yet. So the car rental companies are on fire. They're a mess. Right. And if you can't make money, in that in that season without fire, if that's the only way you can make money is we had to fire everybody. Right. A right? hundred people, which is a third of their workforce, which yeah. I guarantee you wasn't upper or middle management. Yeah, it was on the lower end. Yeah. It was on the low end of people doing the work, but now you're working on two thirds of the staff trying to get more work done because you're trying to grow, right? right? Yeah. This is classic shoot yourself in the foot when you're already six feet under. I, yeah. We're going to have to put this on the calendar to look at again six months from now because I I might have to challenge myself in some stupid way to because if this company makes IPO or the yeah. SEC allows this company to go public right. and barring some huge change, right? right it's insanity to me. How, how, is, how is the SEC worth anything if they allow a company like this to yeah, go? I think, yeah, I think this might be your first red pill, big man. Um, I expect them to pass with flying colors to all of the oversight from the SEC. Um, I'm just thinking personally. Now, I've never used Turo and probably will never use Turo. But I'm saying, <laughs> you know, I might rent cars on there because other people want to rent from me. But I'm just saying, ah, I, I don't understand. Well, I guess this is, this goes to show how much of what we believe is the market is fake. Might not be the correct word, but our belief or understanding about what the market is is a misunderstanding. Because the yeah. real market is this. This is the real market, right? And so yeah. that 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 old that old saying, uh, "Caveat emptor, buyer beware." Right? Mm -hmm. that, that's where this is coming. That's where this is. It's buyer beware, baby. You gotta, you gotta have some awareness here. That when it comes to, I'm, I might rent cars on their platform, but I'm not going to like use it for my personal use ever. Well, right? but they're Although, not the only one in this space either, yeah. right? There's get, get around, around, and there's a couple of others, but yeah. th they're the not, one, they're not even the leading one in this space. Well, like they might be the leading in the peer-to-peer -peer car sharing. The well, well, what I read about it this, but again, it doesn't matter. Yeah. It doesn't matter if they're the leading one or not because they're still unprofitable. Exactly. They're so they're not they're the, going to public. The, uh, it's just insane to me, right? Like, how, But again, you're right, right. We'll have to check back in on this. We'll do this as one of our updates or whatever, our special That's programs. Gonna be, it's going to be exclusive to Patreon now. You have to get the bottom level and all, we're going to get some new content going over there. But yeah, this, this is, listen, and this is one of those things in during the, uh, you know, the, the Panini um, I had extra time sitting around. I said, you know, how do I get in the car business? Because I love cars. Sure. Uh, but I don't want to go be in the retail business of selling used cars because that's a nightmare for me, a guy like me. Mm -hmm. And I stopped to row and I started investigating. And the more I learned about the platform, the more interested I was in being a host, the more I go, I'm never using this service. No. I would much rather go to the, the counter at the airport and get regular a regular carbon insurance no, if I wanted a fancy car, this might be the way to do it. But if you look at a lot of markets, they don't always have the fancy stuff. Like that's where they're sure. If you're in Southern California, if you're in South Florida, they have cool stuff. But in other places, not so much. Yeah, depending on where you go. It's but again, look how many people really, 
And this is why I think this business model is doomed. That's where yes. they're making money. But how many people realistically on any given day in yes. any city are out there looking to rent a luxury car? It's a, what percentage of the 100% of people that need a rental car every day, what yes. percentage need a Lamborghini? What percentage right. need something like that? And, and in most of the cities where services like this, where, where Turo and Get Around and stuff are popular, um, it, Enterprise has an exotic. Enterprise has an exotic rental. It's off of 620 in, in Austin. Absolutely. Um, and uh, they have zero good inventory right now. That's my opinion. Um, they don't have anything cool. But if you, if I wanted to go, I'd go over there because I can check mark liability waiver, all this other stuff, and be like, if I crumple this thing. You don't get a sue. When it comes to a company like Turo, mm -hmm. it's not that they're necessarily bad at managing it. It's just there's an owner, there's an insurance provider, then there's Turo, mm -hmm. there's the platform. There's too many layers here. And we, I got to talk to 50 different people. Whereas with a company like Enterprise or Hertz or whomever, crash the car, you total it, you bought the liability insurance. Yeah, but a company like Enterprise... Uh, I, you may or may not know this is enterprise doesn't pay for insurance for their cars they insure them yeah. themselves because right. they're a multi-billion dollar company right. okay right. Turo, it hasn't they don't have a dollar in their pocket so they if you wrap car. that if you wrap that lambo around a tree yeah. Turo, i can't say right now can come help you well it's not going to be Turo. it's going to be their insurance provider but the question is it's not going to be like if you go to a regular rental car company so in, in a scenario where regular, uh, you're renting a Camry, okay, I'm going to go rent it from the counter, even if it's slightly more expensive. Right. Because I just, I don't like Airbnb. I want to go stay in a hotel. I'm mm -hmm. not a good millennial in that sense. Like, <laughs> it's the more authentic experience of visiting the world. Now, I want to stay in a hotel that I've heard of. <laughs> right? But, yeah, like, so I just think this is, it's a sign of the times, baby. That's what it is. You got no profit. You got no business talking about going public, and you're going public because what? my guess, all of your investors are quaking in their boots, and they want out. And you can't give it to them because you don't have a dollar to spend. But here's the deal. I, I will and give them that. If, you don't want to the, raise the D round because you're going to look like a D bag raising a yeah. D round at this point. And, and e look, if there was one positive spin I could put this, is look, if if you have the ability to go IPO and you can pay off your investors and last a couple of more years and make a couple of million bucks somehow, some way as the CEO or CFO and, and all these things, and you have that opportunity, good on you. I don't think you should be able to, and I don't think you're going to pull it off, but but try. Good on, I, think I, mean, you're, I think you're going to soak your, I think you're soaking your shareholders not your investors, your shareholders. If yep. that's what I think, but that's my opinion. Yep. Um, this is Mark Explainer. You're coming here for investment advice. It's on you, good, brother. Good. Good luck to you.